Okay, so we're looking at roots of complex numbers here and we've got a cute little method that we're going to use which obviously is going to use our de Moivre's theorem and polar form, right? But if we go back, back to the day, if we said to you, um, let's have a go with uh, z to the 4, mm, yeah, we'll look at that one first. So z to the 4 equals 1, and I said, what are the roots of this? What could you tell me? Absolutely plus or minus 1, because 1 to the power of 4 is 1, minus 1 to the power of 4 is 1. Are there any other roots? Oh, yes, plus or minus i. Now, that might not come to you just by looking, but that is where we would go, ooh, we could factorise this little sucker, right? Bring it over the other side. We would then say, hello, this is difference of two squares. And then we go, yes, I could factorise that. That's difference of two squares again. And with this one, we recall that when it's a plus with the difference of two squares, then that would be the plus i and the take i. Agreed? And we end up with z equals, you don't have to copy this stuff down if you don't want to. If you want to, you can, but by all means, I'm not expecting you to. We're happy with that. We got that. Yeah? Okay. What if we had something a little more upscale and we went with z cubed? equals 8. What are our roots for that one? So definitely 2. We can just see by inspection. 2 cubed is 8. Mm -hmm. How would we get the other roots? Because there are... How do we know how many roots there's going to be, by the way? Up to 3. Okay? That sometimes we can have... Um, when we've got a quadratic, we could have one solution. Why would there only be one? because it's a perfect square repeated, that's right. Why would there be no solutions? That's real, imaginary, right? But we're now including imaginary roots, so we wouldn't sort of say none, but we could have repeated roots, okay? Anyway, with this one, we've got two, but there is another pair of roots. How do we get them? So if we're not using de Moivre's theorem, um, you might like this, Liam. We would go, hmm, I'm trying to factorise this. Now, you guys told me just by looking at this, we know that 2 is a 0. So, would you agree that it's going to be z take 2? And so, I would have to have then, oops, let's make a little bit of room there. I would have to have another quadratic factor going on, wouldn't I? We could do it by equating coefficients. So, z times z squared gives me the z cubed. We know this last term, that would be it would have to be positive 4, well done. And to get this bit in the middle, we would do the equating coefficients. Or, what could we do? A friend of ours? Yeah, baby. So, a synthetic, we would say we know that 2 is a 0. What goes up here? 1, there's no z squared, there's no z, but there's the minus 8. I love how math just all comes together. So we put the zero there, we add two times one is two, we add two twos are four, we add, and lo and behold, two fours are eight, and we've got our one, z squared. <laughs> That's our constant, and two z in the middle. Correct? So now, how do I find the zeros of a quadratic? quad form. Or, if we're lazy today, which I am, I'm going to go to my calculator. So, we just got this from our graphics calculator, right? Um, and we know that the whole deal with this is if we substitute these values back in here, it makes it true. Yeah? Okay, so we're going to now see, can we come up with this useful thing with de Moivre's theorem to do it? Because what I'm going to ask you to do in the next 10 minutes is, could you find the zeros of that? And so our method here isn't going to cut it for that. So we're going to employ this 
nth root process um, that will help us to do that. So we're just going to prove that it works. Can we handle that? All right, I'm going to pause you guys for a minute. All right, so what we want to do is we're going to uh, whack this into our polar form. And if we recall, 8 would be we're along here. So what would be my argument? Zero, fantastic. So does everybody agree that z cubed, if, uh, sorry, if I rewrite eight, that would be eight cis zero. Are we happy with that? All right, because the argument is zero. However, we know we're going to be getting not one, but two, but three solutions, which means I'm going to be doing laps of this. So is everyone happy now that we go plus k lots of 2 pi to take on the laps to get our multiple solutions. With this, we are not doing endless laps here because we reckon we're going to have three roots. That's what we're going for. So don't think that you have to just keep going and going and going. All right. So we end up saying, well, that means z cubed is 8 cis k 2 pi because obviously 0 plus k 2 pi things. And, you know, if that wasn't 8, if it was going, let's say, if it was um, i, if it was 8i, what would my argument be then? Pi on 2. So it would be pi on 2 plus k 2 pi. If it was minus something i, then we're going to go with minus pi on 2. And if it was negative, a whole uh, negative, a con what's it called? What is that called? An integer? No imaginary, right? It would be pi. Excellent. We good? So my next step now, hit me with it. What would z be? So we're going to do it, you said two, sis. We're going to do it in steps here. Oh, I can save that. Yeah, baby. Uh, sis k2 pi, we're going to take that to the one third. And now kick it in, good old Demoivre. We're going to whack him in there because this means we can now say this is 8 to the 1 third. Sis, what? What does he tell us to do, peeps? Times it. And so when we're timesing this by a third, it's basically dividing by 3. And we've got that. Um, we can simplify that just a tad, as you guys said before, that 8 to the um, cube root is 2. And now we're going to get our three solutions because what we will do is we'll start by the first one will be when k is 0. Now when k is 0, what do we end up with? So this is z, by the way, z. We end up with 2 cis 0 times anything is 0, 0 divided by 0, 2 cis 0, and last time I checked, we know that is 2. Oops, why am I putting anything else there? It's just 2. Good. When k equals 1, we end up with z equals 2 cis 1 times, that is 2 pi on 3. Now, what is cis of 2 pi on 3? This is where the magic happens. You can do that by hand, or we can go back to our calculator here. And 2 cis, what was it? 2 pi over 3. Brrr, what are we expecting, kids? What, what, what? Wah Yay. So remember, this is proving that we're getting the same answer up here. Okay, so we get the minus 1 plus i root 3. And of course, when we make k equal to 2, we're ending up with 2 cis, right, 4 pi on 3. Remembering, I mean, your calculators can deal with this. I'm still back in the, uh, my old days, where we're saying that the argument technically has to be between pi and negative pi, right? So how do I write this nicely, that it has to be between pi and minus pi? You can actually take off 2 pi, yeah? So if we take off 2 pi,
I put it all over third, so you agree six divided by three is two? Four take six is minus two. Now, you might be going, mm, why do you do that? Sometimes that's handy when you want to draw them. Um, yeah, anyway. And pop that in your calculator, and lo and behold, we will get one minus one take i root three. Yeah, so it works, and this is what we can then employ to solve complex roots of this because all I have to do is plop this into polar form, which we know how to do, and then away we go. To finish this off, they're going to ask you, oh, I did the wrong thing. They're going to ask you to display this on your Argan diagram. And when I said I did the wrong thing, I should draw my circle first because it's very hard to draw the circle through the axis. So if I was to graph these um, solutions here on my Argan plane, what we notice, or what we should notice, is what's the modulus of all of them? No, no, for these ones, two, right? If you work out this, one squared plus root three squared will be root four, two. They've all got the same modulus, okay? We've got this one here being two, so this would be our z equals 2. Where would this one be? 2 cis, 2 pi on 3. Right, so up here, z equals 2 cis, 2 pi on 3, because if you think about it, it's coming up here by 1 third. Yeah? And then where's our other one going to be? Down here, and... They are, they are what, sorry? How would you describe these little suckers? So again, that's mm -mm, pi on three. Conjugates. That's right. And so if you haven't established by now, there's a couple of little properties that, as you've been working through the book, that comes into play with this that we should know. So one, the first thing that we realize is this um, this one here is the conjugate of that. So remember, you can work them with z. Uh, we've got z. The conjugate of z is how do we record, how do we express that? Z with the little star. But as we've actually seen here, when we're using polar form, do we know that we've got cis theta? What's the conjugate of that? Cis negative theta. And if you can look at this, and this is part of the geometry stuff that we were sort of skipping a little bit, but we can see, if I was to add z plus the conjugate of z, so I'm adding this one here, would you agree? What happens? The result is that, which is what? It's a, not what, but it's a real value, isn't it? There's no imaginary because it comes down. If I had a thingy here and I'm adding its conjugate there, right? It comes here once again. It just becomes this horizontal situation, real. So one of the little things that you want to add to your notes if you haven't done it is that when we have the complex plus its conjugate, it's always going to equal a real value. And that's a handy little property to have. Was say. Oh yeah, and the other thing to notice is these are nicely evenly spaced. Okay, it's not that we've got this one here, this one here, and then we've got it going like that. They are evenly spaced, and you will find that when we do ones, you know, when x got a z to the four, they two will be evenly spaced. Z to the five evenly spaced, and you'll see in a minute with the properties when you if you add them all together, you get this. They call it a polygon, regular polygon. Right? So imagine if you went there and then we added that one on there and then we added on the other one, you'll get a beautiful little triangle. When it's z to the 4, you'll get a square. When it's z to the 5, you'll get a pentagon and so on. Okay? So, do you like that? So over here, in your textbook, mm, oh, there they go. They did that one. Um, what I would really like you to make a note of is this stuff here, 
which I think you will establish, yes, that is true. So there are exactly n nth roots of this. Okay, if that value here that we're looking at, if it's real, then you must have conjugate pairs, right? The complex roots will be conjugate pairs. So we had that when we had the, the 8, we had our minus 1, plus or minus, whatever. Um, this one, when we have complex roots, so we'll come and looking at that in a moment, um, it's not always going to be in a conjugate pair. So we're talking more so about when we're doing ones like this. Okay, you might not get the pair happening. Um, the roots will have the same modulus. We established that. Our one all had 2, 2, 2 as its modulus. Modulus, making up words now. Um, they all are in the circle. Yep, we tick. The roots on the circle will be equal, equally spaced around the circle. If you join them, yeah, oh yeah, they'll make the regular polygon. We're happy with that. So, it's for you to get a little bit of um, playing around. I do want to actually look together at 6a just to remind you of some algebra skills, nothing more. But all of this is pretty much the same thing over and over and over again. Um, and then the very last exercise that we're going to do is about when it's always going to equal to 1. And those things, are with, that's it. And then we're doing the reviews. Uh, and the geometry, which I'll give you stuff next week. Uh, so, just to kick off, we're going to do all of 4F1. Find the three cube roots of 1 using factorization. So, we would have Z cubed equals 1. Just by inspection, what's one of our zeros? 1. So, oh, I should put that on the other side. So, remember, we can go... That's going to be Z take 1. Now it's your call. Would you like to do synthetic, uh, what's it called? Equating coefficients or synthetic division. So Z times Z squared gives me the Z cubed. Minus 1 times positive 1 gives me my minus 1, which I want. But what is my middle term? So if you want to do equating coefficients, you'll pop that in as plus B. Who wants to do synthetic division? Oh, all the hands went up. And there was like this amazing, joyful exclamation that came out in the class there. Some of them said, we actually want to get t-shirts made about synthetic division. But we said, no, no, no. So, 1x cubed, no x squared, no x. And then we've got the minus 1. So, we go 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Yay, that was 0. So that tells me that the middle term is 1z. And then how will we get the zeros from that? Quad formula, baby. But it's a bit beneath us, so I will go to my calculator. <laughs> you know, time is precious. Okay, so with 2a, as we were just saying, you can't do it with the whole get it on one side and pull out a common factor or find the zero just by looking. Oh, maybe some of you can. But anyway, so we're going straight into... Let's put it into polar form. Now, remember, you can't actually have a negative modulus, right? So, when we're looking at this, this is actually 8 times minus i. We? Oui? And so, what we're looking at here, what is the polar form of minus i? We're looking here that this now becomes minus pi on 2, which you guys said at the start of the lesson. Yeah? So this now is cis. We've got minus pi on 2, but don't forget, we can do laps. So plus k lots of 2 pi. All right, so this is where it's different from the ones we were doing before because we just had zero all the time. It's like, oh, we didn't have to mess around with fractions. Now we've got this. We good? So let's just tidy it up a little bit before we go on. And what I do when I look at this is I just go, okay, let's put it all over the same denominator. So this was technically a 1. To make that 2, we've got to times the top by 2 as well. So this would be k lots of 4 pi. Are we happy with that? Which means we've now got 8 cis minus pi 
plus k lots of 4 pi all on 2. Now we can hit the Moivre's theorem. So z will be 8 cis minus pi plus k4 pi oops, all over 2 to the 1 third. And 8 to the 1 third is 2. We end up with cis minus pi plus k lots of 4 pi over 6. Correct. And then we can go through when k is 0, when k is 1, and when k is 2. And, you know, maybe pop, pop it back in. So once you've got your three solutions... Put it back in, so cube it, cube each one, and will it give you minus 8i? You know if you're right or wrong before looking at the back of the book. Um, as you are going through, you are going to end up with, I can't remember what question, I think it was the question I had up on the board originally, the 2 plus 2i, or I don't know, there's one that comes up, but you're going to have to have something like 2 root 2, and you have to take that to the one third. And you go, how do I simplify that? Yeah, your calculator will give you a decimal, which you might recognise. However, we should know this from basic thirds or even methods. You've seen it before. This is 2 to the 1 times 2 to the half, is it not? And when you're timesing by the same base, what do you do to the powers? You add them. So is everybody happy that 1 plus 1 and a half is the same as 1 and a half, which is 3 over 2? And then when you're taking that to the 1 third, you multiply, so what is 3 over 2 times 1 third? They cancel, so yes, 3 over 6, which is a half. So we end up that that will actually simplify to be root 2. <laughs> right? So as you're coming along with some of those, when you're playing with the, um, you know, taking it to a power and stuff, just think about, can I use some of my indice rules to simplify that? No, don't get spooked by it. So um, I'd like you to try and have a go at this. Just what can we just say? What are you going to do? Put everything in polar form and remember your cis properties. That when you've got cis divided by cis, actually I would do this one first. Cis times cis. What do you do to the angles? Add them, and then you'd have cis divided by cis. So you take them. So it's going to look like a disgusting piece of work. But go your polar form, go your Demarvis theorem, and go your cis properties, and it's actually quite nice. I yeah, know. Yeah, so when you multiply 25, it'll be 25 times 1 over 30, so it'll become 5 pi on 6. Aha. Uh -huh. So give it a stab. Obviously, have a look here. I, think, I don't think that's really anything overly new. They're just asking you to display it on a diagram, which we hopefully know how to do. Is that okay? And God knows, I hope I do see you Wednesday. I'll be here.